Starting as a pet portrait artist, like any other business, is not easy, but it is possible. There is plenty of room for all of us in this niche. Just imagine how many millions of pets are out there waiting to be drawn. In this video, I'm going to share how I became a pet portrait artist, how to price your artwork, where to find your clients, how to deal with clients, where to promote your artwork, tips and tricks, and much more. You'll also see me work on this commission next to me, and I'm going to do it in real time, so no speeding up, because I want you to see how I add all the small details. Because the topic of this tutorial is all about commissions, I was thinking, why just not work on a commission while talking about it? What do you need to be a pet portrait artist? All you need to do to be a pet portrait artist is motivation, love for animals, time to practice, materials to draw, and hard work. The art supplies must be archival, which means they won't suffer changes with time. Now that you are selling your art, you want to provide the best quality possible. Sounds simple, right? But we all know that practice is much harder than theory. Without practicing drawing pets as often as possible, we can't get better and better at it. Fur is very hard to draw because it has a lot of layers, colors and goes in all the directions possible. If you have a good set of pencils, some quality paper and a hand to draw with, all you have to do is to get to work and explore this new drawing subject. How I started drawing pets I started drawing pets 4 years ago. Before that, I only worked in graphite. One day, I was thinking about something that would remind me of my cat forever, finally having a moment of brilliance and realizing that I could try drawing her. Said and done. I was very nervous as I had never used color pencils before, venturing into a totally new experience. I took a quality picture of her with my phone and started drawing her. After the first touch of the pencil on the paper, I totally fell in love with color pencils and after I completed my cat's eye, I realized that this is what I want to do from now on, eventually giving up drawing people. I don't know what attracts me so much to drawing animals, but I have a huge love for nature and everything around us, including animals, which was like a driving force in this new adventure. Animals are so complex, fur goes in all directions, they have so many colors in their eyes and fur, which always keeps me entertained when drawing a pet, you can really never get bored. After my cat drawing was done, I posted the final result on Facebook, receiving some very positive feedback which further filled my desire to try another pet portrait. People started to ask me if I could draw their furry friends as well, after which everything was like a snowball effect getting more requests and better with each drawing. I think that pretty much all of us who draw pet portraits have a similar story. We all started by drawing for family, then strangers saw it and wanted a drawing too. If we did it, surely you will too. Just believe in yourself and give yourself a lot of time to practice. The legal side of being an artist. Because unfortunately, nothing is free in this world. If you are considering turning your hobby into a business, taxes play a very important role in this whole process. I won't go into too much detail about how to do your taxes because I have an accountant and I'm not very good at it, but I wanted to mention that you can't be a legal pet portrait artist without taking this step. I too found it hard to see that out of the total amount taken on a portrait, some goes to tax and some to social security, but that makes me feel like I have a legal business and everything has to be taken seriously. One thing to consider is that when you move your passion from hobby to legal business, some things change, like the fact that nothing will be as relaxed as when you didn't have these obligations, but this important step must be taken to move to the next level of your career as a pet portrait artist. What difficulties you will surely encounter as a pet portrait artist. Although I would like to tell you that everything is a piece of cake and will go smoothly, the reality is that you will encounter difficulties. Everything I say in this video is from my own experience as a pet portrait artist. The first difficulty will be putting yourself and your art out there in the world. This is a very scary step, knowing that you are exposed to the world and your art will be seen and judged. But there is a positive side to this, especially when you see all the positive comments and support from the other artists. Another difficulty encountered when starting a new career is finding clients. 
in order to find clients so they can make a decision if it's what they want or not. We all start out drawing for our family for free or for a very small fee, this being a perfect time to refine our skills and create a body of work. Without products, there are no customers, right? People want to see what you can do before they purchase. It's like going to the supermarket, but it's empty. If you don't see any products on the shelves, you have quickly walked in, looked around and left because there's nothing else keeping you in the store. It's the same with social media and promotion. If people don't see that you regularly post drawings and don't have a body of work, they will move on and find someone else who has all of those things. With all that being said, create as much as you can, explore new breeds of cats and dogs, horses or other pets to have a more diverse portfolio, reaching a wider audience. As artists, we don't post every completed artwork on our social media, that's because not everything comes out as planned, but as a beginner pet portrait artist, you'll be tempted to post anything to showcase your art as much as possible to get some traction. But the more important question is, when are you ready to show your art to the world? The idea of posting for the first time on social media is terrifying, but exciting at the same time. I believe there is no ideal time to showcase your art on the internet. When you're comfortable enough with the level you're at, then it's time to take the step. Nowadays, social media has become a chaos but also a great opportunity for artists, many of us taking advantage of this opportunity and the benefits of the internet in this modern world. The art community on social media is very encouraging. As artists, we all are competitors, but there is room for everyone. So I don't see the point in putting each other down. I like to discover new artists and encourage them with positive comments and advices. You don't have to be afraid of what people say, you draw for yourself and your soul, not for others. You will know for sure when to post on social media for the first time, and if you really can't convince yourself to do it, be spontaneous and one day post something without thinking about the consequences and start from there, see what works and doesn't. In time, you'll get courage, you'll learn how to post quality pictures from the right angle and discover how this whole social media works. How much should you charge for your commissions? When it comes to being a pet portrait artist, the price of a drawing can be very awkward to talk about. At first, you'll feel very guilty charging money for a drawing and you'll feel embarrassed when the client asks you for your rates. Each of us knows how much we would like to be paid for a drawing, so there is no magic formula to calculate the price, but what you can do is to do some research and find out how much other artists charge and compare their skills level with yours. Of course, an artist with much more experience than you will charge more for a drawing. We all start from a very small amount, but the more drawings you do, the more experience you gain, instantly increasing your rates. The easiest way to figure out your pricing is to calculate how much a drawing takes you and divide the duration of that drawing by hours. For example, a drawing costs $200. If that drawing took you 20 hours, you were paid $10 per hour. I understand that at first you don't feel entitled to charge a huge amount, which is fair enough, but never underpay yourself. If you charge very little money for your art, it will be very difficult to raise your prices in the future as you will only attract clients who have a very small budget or aren't willing to pay as much for art as it is worth because, after a while, you will feel the need to raise your prices as you will realize that you are offering now a higher quality drawing that is worth more money. I raise my prices by very little every time I am fully booked for 3 months, so about 4 times a year. By adding just a small amount over time, I will stay within the budget of the current clients, but at the same time targeting clients who have a larger budget. I know it sounds very complicated, but you are the only one who decides how valuable your art is and over time, you'll gain enough experience to talk about money proudly, without shame and not caring when clients stop responding after you tell them the rates, because frankly, you wouldn't want to work with such people. Even now, after 4 years, only 1 in 10 people who contact me become my clients and want a drawing, so it happens to all of us 
you just need a bit of luck to get in front of the right people. Where can you find your first clients? Let's be honest, our first customers are always our family and friends. But we can't keep drawing for them, are we? At some point, we have to find a way to attract people outside our family who are interested in art. The easiest way to get our art in front of total strangers is the internet. The online scene has developed so much in the recent years that with a ton of luck and the stars aligned to your advantage, you can go viral overnight especially with apps like TikTok. A must-have in self-promotion is a website. To be taken seriously, I recommend building a website that is simple but contains all the information needed. By using a website, you will become visible on Google, having the possibility to be discovered by more people. CEO search engine optimization plays a very important role when it comes to getting discovered on Google. It pays to do some research to make sure you are using all the tricks up your sleeve. Now let's break down some very popular ways of promotion. The first one is Facebook. On Facebook, your posts can only be seen by people who follow you. I recommend making a page separate from your personal one. Facebook now has a business page option as well. There, you will try to attract people who want to see art on their feed, who are crazy about their pets and who may become potential future clients. Add the profile picture of yourself holding a drawing you made or, if you are not confident enough to show your face yet, take an attractive picture of one of your drawings, make a nice description for people coming to your page for the first time and try to add a link to your Instagram page if you have one. Another popular way to promote yourself on Facebook is to post in Facebook groups, for example, if you are drawing a Labrador, look for groups with Labrador lovers who accept promotion and post there. You'll be surprised by the impact it can have for your business. Make sure to read the rules of the groups beforehand to avoid unwanted events, the most common being deleting your post and being kicked out from the group. Instagram. This platform is my favorite even though its algorithm gives me headaches sometimes. Unlike Facebook, here you can use hashtags with which you can reach a whole new audience without much effort. The explore page is a great place to aim for, so do a little hashtag research before posting. Another great way to get your art in front of people's eyes is Instagram's new edition called Reels. They are a goldmine. If you put up a well-made video at the right time and using a popular soundtrack, you can go viral overnight and attract a lot of traffic to your Instagram page, this being perfect for new artists, so I recommend investing time in them. Another important tool that many artists tend to forget about is local promotion. You never know how many people in your area are art lovers until you show them that you are an artist living locally, willing to draw their pets. Many people don't even know they want a drawing of their pet until they see someone else's pet artwork. This summer, I handed out over 2000 flyers in my town, putting them in people's mailboxes. Also during that time, I went to all the pet shops, vets, dog trimmers, cat and dog hotels in my area and left my business cards everywhere. After I finished sharing all of those, I can't even explain the level of fulfillment I felt. I knew I was telling the people around me, hey, I exist, I make drawings and this is my art. Buying flyers and business cards can be a big investment for beginners, but you'll never know what it would be like if you don't try. How to deal with clients? Now that you know how to promote yourself, what do you do when your first customer approaches you and they are interested in commissioning a portrait? First of all, the most important thing is to make sure that the picture they provide is good enough to make a drawing from it. Accepting a very low quality photo will only frustrate you and take all the joy out of drawing. People need to understand that not every picture can be used to make a drawing. You'll meet some very good clients, but also some very complicated ones or ones who try to scam you. Some will, some will be okay with everything you do, but there will be also those clients who want a change every time you send them an update, so be prepared to adapt for everyone. Be as professional as possible in your communication and don't feel guilty talking about your prices. Even nowadays, there is a conception in many people's heads that art is just a hobby 
and it isn't worth paying for, usually these people will not be willing to pay anything or very little, which you want to avoid. With time, you learn to see who is willing to be your client and who isn't, just after a few words exchanged. How does the whole process of creating a commission work? It all starts when you receive a message from someone interested. You'll be asked straight away how much a drawing costs. Usually, many people don't even bother to visit your website to check out the prices and they will directly ask you. Once you've told them your rates, the conversation can go two ways. It's simple. Either you'll get ghosted or the conversation will continue, which is a good sign, meaning that the customer is willing to pay for a drawing and he agrees with your rates and the next step is for you to send them an invoice with the amount that has to be paid. After this topic is over, it's time to see what reference pictures the client has to offer. Here as well it can go two ways. Usually the lower quality photos are from the owners whose pet has passed away and it's impossible for them to provide you with other photos, which is totally understandable. When I encounter this situation, I try to use as many of the photos provided as possible to produce an acceptable drawing or trying to edit them. If the pet is still alive, many clients are willing to take other photos to make your job easier because in the end, both parties want the best end result. Once everything is in order with the photos, a deposit must be paid. If you don't want to get ripped off, I recommend asking for a deposit. I experienced this many times in the beginning, which was a very important lesson. I always ask for a 50% deposit, but you can also ask 20%, 30% or 40% depending on what you think is acceptable. By asking for a deposit, you also get an instant guarantee that the client is willing to pay for the drawing and will complete his part of the deal. When someone is unwilling to pay upfront, it's a red flag that they are not willing to be honest and it's better to stay away from such cases. All that being in place, it's time to start the drawing. I recommend sending an update to the clients as often as possible to leave room for touch-ups. If you only send them the end result, it will be very hard to make any major adjustments. Now the drawing has been finished and approved by the client, it's time for the payment of the other half plus the shipping costs. A second invoice will be sent, including all the payment details. Some customers are willing to pay everything up front, but that's very rarely. Once you are sure that everything has been paid for, the drawing must be packed and sent. Make sure it is very well protected throughout the transit period, both against moisture and against bending. I always remember to ask customers for a picture or a video of the drawing next to the real pad to add to my website and to post on social media. By doing this, you'll gain more credibility that you are the one doing all the drawings, as I have often been accused of stealing pictures or videos from other artists and posting them on my social media. Keeping fingers crossed, the artwork will get to the customer intact and they will be over the moon with what they got. That's pretty much the whole process from my own experience. Of course, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way, each of us has unique experiences when it comes to that, but in general, this is what a commission process looks like from start to finish. Now let's do a quick recap to make sure you don't forget the important things. Take your time, practice, observe and learn. Try to use quality archival materials from the beginning. Make a website, learn how to promote yourself on social media, make sure that the reference photos are usable before committing starting a commission. Pack the drawing very well, always ask for a deposit, be very formal in your conversation with the customers. If someone isn't willing to pay what your art is worth, you are better off without such clients. Do all the legal formalities to avoid tax evasion and do not underpay yourself. That's all I had to share about my experience as a pet portrait artist. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you want to see more content of this kind, please subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to notify it every time a video goes live. And I really hope I'm going to see you in the next video as well. Have a nice day wherever you are. Bye everyone!